Hey, good evening. It's a Tuesday, March 5th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Just a quick reminder, if we get a couple more questions, we'll have Q&A this Friday, if not the next, but uh, if you have questions, send them in. We're going to continue looking at Ephesians with this theme of how we can know God better, and chapter 4 through 6 gives us practical ways to do that in application. And chapter 4 begins with this challenge. Paul says, we want to live a life that is worthy of the calling that we've been given. The glorious calling that Jesus has given us. So how do we do that? Well, we know it's not about being perfect, because Jesus was perfect. You and I are going to continually be in patterns of not doing well. That's why Jesus died for us. But we can have a mindset of trying to honor him. And we've looked the last couple of times where Paul is telling us that working together, speaking and loving one another as God has called us to, doing the things that he's called us to, doing the work of the ministry, that that's going to build us up. And in doing that, we're going to be stable. We're going to be secure. Then, <clears throat> in verse 15 of chapter 4, we read this line, which I, you've probably heard more times than I can imagine. It says, instead, instead of doing this thing about being tossed back and forth, which is verse 14 is talking about, where we're, we are uh, subject to the schemes of people who want to deceive us, instead of that, Speak, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. We will grow if we speak the truth in love to each other. We want to speak words that build. That's the title of the video tonight. We want to speak words that build, that encourage, that strengthen. <laughs> That's what we're being called to do here. Okay, that's fair. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to take a shot at that. Let's take the two categories. The first is speak the truth. What does that mean? It doesn't mean, say, just true things, because true things can be hurtful. If you're too loud, you're not considerate. Stop that. Those may not be all accurate things to say, but that's not truth. Truth means I'm adding this component of bringing honor to God. So what that means is that the things I say need to be accurate. There's three things for both truth and love. Things I need to say, they need to be accurate. They need to be what actually happened. Not some kind of spin on it, but what actually happened. Then they need to be genuine. They need to be something that I really want to say to someone to help build them up. So if I want to speak the truth in a way that's pos positive and helpful and growing, I want to be accurate in what I say. I want to be genuine. I'm not trying to get something out of it. And then the third component, this, you cannot speak second source information if you want to challenge someone and help them. By second source, I mean, well, I heard somebody say this about you. I want to talk to you about that. See, that's second source. Someone told me that you hurt them. That's second source. You want to be able to go directly on things that you know firsthand. If that other someone is essential to the story, bring them along so that they can be accurate, genuine, and be first source. So those three things. You want to be accurate in what you say. You want to be genuine in what you say. And you don't want to speak from a second source. You want to speak from the heart about things that actually you know firsthand. So that's the first part. That's what it means to speak in truth. What it means, but what about in love? Again, three things here. If I'm going to speak in love, it cannot be self-serving. It cannot be, I cannot speak words that are somehow going to manipulate this other person into doing something that I wind up benefiting from it. 
it's got to be something that doesn't benefit me at all. They need to know I really care about them. I'm not coming here to get something for me. I'm coming because I care about them. The second component of speaking in love is that I've got to sacrificially care about the person I'm talking to. That means I need to know where they are. I need to know their attitudes. I need to know what they're struggling with as much as possible and be sensitive to that, to be caring about that. I want to make sure that I understand where they are. Are they, are they hurting? Is something strugg Are they struggling with something? Is your teenager hurting? Something happened that's traumatic. I need to know about that. that I need to care. I need to sacrificially care for where someone is. And then the third thing, you know, on the love side, I need to make sure I'm honoring God and not me. This is not about getting even. This is about trying to build growth in that person so that the words actually heal and build up. So if I'm going to speak in love, then I'm not going to be self-serving. I'm going to be sacrificially caring so I really know what the situation is the person I'm speaking to. And my heart's desire, as much as I can, is to bring honor to God and not to me. That's a very basic understanding of speaking truth and love. Okay, just, just to repeat, hey Echo, if I'm speaking the truth and love, I'm going to be accurate, I'm going to be genuine, I'm going to make sure it's not second source, but it's from the heart. And then I'm going to love in such a way that it's not serving to me, hey girl, I'm sacrificially caring for that person so I know where they are, and I want to bring honor to God. Hey, Echo. Hey, girl. It's okay. Yeah. Hey, girl. Hey. You can come in. We're about done. We're going to bring honor to God and not to me. I think Echo agrees with that, too. Glad, you, glad you're here, girl. That's speaking the truth in love. That's what God has called us to. And that is something that is really, really special. That will allow us to speak words that build up, that actually make a difference and allow us to speak in a manner worthy of what we've been called. And that's the thought for this night. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for being here. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.